welcome back to the channel. My name is Fagan. I am gonna go ahead and jump right into this because I don't want this to be a super duper long video. I did a video called I Married the Wrong Man and How to Hear from God Concerning Your Spouse. And I'm gonna go ahead and link that right up on top. And you can go ahead and check that out as like a uh, part one and this would be the part two. But I get comments very often, especially on that video about um, pretty much fear, fear of marrying the wrong man, fear of falling for the counterfeit. And I wanted to go ahead and do a video on how to avoid the biggest way, the best way to avoid falling for the counterfeit or avoid marrying the wrong person. So in that video, I shared how I ended up marrying someone, was married to them for a few years and how tumultuous and challenging that marriage was, how abusive emotionally, physically, how I know now without a shadow of doubt that that person was never meant to be my husband, that that was a mistake that I made. Out of my carnality, I married someone who was never ever really even meant to be a part of my life. Um, and now how I am married now to my soulmate, the person who was created for me. I was created for him. So I want to go ahead and talk about that. I want to talk about how to avoid something like that happening to you. I first want to start off by saying that there is no reason, no ever a reason for us to fear Satan. There's no reason for us to fear any device that he might throw at us. That's what the Bible says. He is going to throw devices. He is going to try different things in our life to steer us away from purpose, to steer, away, steer us away from joy, to steer us away from destiny. It is up to us to have the tools and the weapons in our artillery to be able to fight those things because they're inevitable. It's going to come. The first tool that we need to have is truth, right? And so I think we first have to recognize the fact that God does have a perfect person for you. He has a perfect spouse for you. He has created someone particularly for you. He has equipped them with everything that they need in order to be your husband or your wife and vice versa. Same for you. You have everything you need in order to be the best husband or wife for this individual. God is a purposeful God. He does not do anything um, out of happenstance, right? There's no mistakes when it comes to him. If you do not believe in soulmates, if you don't believe that there's a perfect, perfect person for you, I want to go ahead and just challenge you to think about something. If you are a child of God and you can honestly say that he has ordained everything in your life, yes, you do have free will, but he has ordained everything in your life. I know for me, he showed me what state to move to, what house to buy, what school to send my children to. He cares about the big things in our lives and he also cares about the little things. For me, like he shows me every day, like I'll be cooking a meal and he'll show me, put this in it, don't put that in it. He cares about how my food tastes. And it's important for us to realize that from the smallest things to the biggest things in our life, he has his hands in. We do have free will, but there is no way that he's going to know every hair on my head, but not care about the person that I spend the rest of my life with. I don't know about you, but I am a strong believer that the person that I'm to marry, the person, my spouse, is supposed to be able and equipped to, to fulfill purpose with me, to fulfill destiny. And if I am supposed to fulfill destiny and purpose with this individual, this can't just be any old individual. And I'm big on purpose and destiny. God did not just put you on earth for no reason. And so don't be afraid of the counterfeit. Just know that the best way for me to combat a counterfeit is to know that there's a one, number one going to be a counterfeit. You can't have a counterfeit if you don't have a real. If the enemy is going to throw a counterfeit at you, best believe that there is a if you're struggling with the fact that there could be a counterfeit, if you're struggling with the idea of marrying someone and there might be some fear that's in you saying, hey, you know, I don't want to make the wrong decision. I don't want to have to heal from all the things that I have to heal from and have to deal with maybe a an abusive marriage. I don't want to have to deal with all of that. You don't have to deal with that as long as you first and foremost acknowledge the fact that God has someone for you. Because again, if you do that, if you acknowledge that there is someone for you, purposefully for you, you will be able to sniff out the counterfeit when it comes. You'll be able to go to God and say, okay, Lord, who do you have for me? What is this person going to possess? What should I look for? What should, what it should be red flags that'll make me realize that this is a counterfeit. 
if you don't believe that God has a perfect will for you, how do you go to him and say, well, God, who do you have for me? How can you ask him that if you don't believe he has anyone for you? I truly believe that a lot of people don't like the idea of having a soulmate on this earth or having God being uh, in control of the person you marry because they don't like to relinquish control. I was like that. I didn't like to relinquish control. The idea of having to submit to the Lord about who you marry kind of takes the fun out of dating, right? I think a lot of people feel like that. Like, well, dang, if I have to submit to God and seek God about who he has for me, then I don't get to just serial date. I don't get to just date whoever I want, have sex with whoever I want, do whatever I want, and then whoever makes me feel good or whoever I have the most chemistry with, then I'll go ahead and marry. That's what people want to do. They like doing that, but that's what gets people in trouble. The idea of submitting to God, seeking God, the word says to seek God first, in his kingdom, seek what I need to do for you, Lord. What do you want me to do for you? What have you created for me to do? What have you created me to do on this earth? What is my purpose? When you see God with all of those things, it is inevitable for your husband to come, for your wife to come. Because when you come to God about his stuff, his kingdom business, you're working on you. Make me better, make me whole. Allow me to walk in purpose. He is going to bring that help me, that person for you. If I can be very honest with myself, when I was previously married to my ex-husband, I really didn't want God's perfect will for me. I wanted what was gonna make me feel good, what was gonna appease the uh, flesh, what was gonna make me feel secure, what was gonna make me feel comfort. So to wrap it all up, it is not a matter of following rules in order for these things to not happen to you, for you not to fall for the wrong person. The way to not fall for the wrong person is to seek God accept his truth, accept what he has for you. Have faith that there is someone for you. Have faith that he will never leave you out there to be deceived. And once you do that, you sit with him in communion and you say, okay, Lord, I need you to show me who this person is and where do you want me to be in life? What do you want me to do in order to prepare myself for him, prepare myself for her? And I can assure you, once all of that is done and you follow what God instructs you to do after that, there is no way no way your desires won't be met. So thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate all the comments and the likes and subscribers that I've been getting. It is not taken lightly. Comment down below if there's anything that you might be afraid to relinquish to God, whether it be like this, your relationships, it could be anything. Sometimes we are afraid to let go. We're afraid to relinquish control and those very things, God wants to really move and do things in our life as it pertains to those things. But because we won't let go, his hands are tied. And so I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray with you. I want to be in agreement with you and I wanna help you through those things. So if those things are coming to a light as you watch this video, go ahead and comment down below what those things are and let's go ahead and talk about it. I'll see you guys next time.